Okay, so the timeline of hypertrophy. Now, it's quite, quite universally ex accepted that if you take a novice individual, so somebody who's never done resistance training uh, before, then most of the gains that they get in um, strength to begin with are actually due to neural adaptations. Okay, so you have the motor programs being laid down in your brain, you're learning the technique, the correct technique. I mean, if we remember back to the first time, any of us that do resistance training, the first time we ever lifted a weight, you probably had a friend or somebody a bit older telling you this is what you need to do and that movement would have felt awkward. Things that feel quite natural now would have felt awkward. I know when I was 17, uh, one of my school friends, we, went, we, you know, we finished our GCSE, last GCSE exam, he said, Amir, come to the gym with me. So I went and he was teaching me how to do bench press and dumbbell flies and, and I was just, you know, lightweight, but I couldn't, you know, I mean, when I say I couldn't, it just felt awkward, you know. So everybody has that starting point, but by doing that initial training, you're putting down those neural pathways and you're able to get the coordination, you're able to enhance the electrical signals going to the muscle as well. So this is about the first six weeks. The first six weeks, the, the gains in strength are mainly due to your muscle being better able to respond to uh, the movement. You can see in this diagram here that you don't necessarily, you get some hypertrophy, but you don't really get a big hypertrophy occurring straight away. Okay, so that's why resistance training is a gradual process. Um, so you have these neural adaptations, then afterwards they, the neural adaptations kind of level off. You, you know the right technique, you've got the motor program in your brain, the, those, those pathways are, uh, are, are developed. And we will talk next week a little bit more detail about the, 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 the kind of neuromuscular uh, adaptations. We'll talk about those things next week, like rate coding and the frequency of the stimulus to the muscle. But um, those level off and then hypertrophy starts to happen. So myofibrillar hypertrophy starts to take place and it takes a couple of weeks before you get serious increase in muscle fibre size. It's not something that happens overnight but then when you think about it, you know, it, it, our muscle is a living tissue and it does take, need time to adapt. You don't get things happening instantly. You need to have processes that are going on in the background. And, and so when hypertrophy takes over, that then contributes to the next kind of increase in strength or the most serious increase in strength because the more myofibrils you've got the more actin and myosin cross bridge formation and the stronger your muscle contraction. Now at some point and this is what we were talking about before the plateau so individuals will undergo a plateau in their strength and, and probably even in muscle growth as well and that's where having the knowledge of experienced coaches can help you overcome that plateau and in terms of trying to understand the science behind that there isn't actually that much scientific studies that have looked at how to overcome the plateau at least not to my knowledge but there are lots of coaching approaches you know p p coaches that have worked with elite athletes that know how to come out of this phase and many of those are ones that people use in their training uh, there is some limited evidence about some approaches to come out of the plateau which we'll talk about but really you've got to work with somebody that's quite experienced and has experience of actually helping people overcome the strength plateau now, this is another figure, and I've actually adapted this figure from this paper here by Damas, published in 2018, so quite recent, and they talk about what I'm telling you today about the timeline for hypertrophy. It's a very nicely written review paper, it's well worth reading. And again, what we can see is that muscle hypertrophy will happen, it will actually start after you've done at least 20 to 24 sessions. So that is probably about six or seven weeks. So if you think about, you know, if you're doing resistance training sessions, you're doing four or five, might even be doing less to begin with but like four or five in a given week then obviously as you accumulate those sessions only then will you start to have an increase in hypertrophy and a consequent increase in cross-sectional area now when we do an acute bout of exercise resistance training exercise we all know that we feel quite pumped so you know you do your resistance training session if you go into the changing room take the t-shirt off you're looking quite good by the time you get home to have your dinner you're looking back to normal again and, and that kind of of changing room physique is because you've got this muscle pump and that's what we're going to talk about in the second lecture but we can see in this diagram here as well that we do get what we call edema or fluid within the muscle cell that causes the pump okay but that disappears as soon as by the time you get home the water has left the muscle cell and you've lost that pump again and so that goes back down. Um, but real proper uh, myofibrillar hypertrophy, the, the one that really contributes to increase in 
force production or power or strength is from myofibrillar hypertrophy. 